Hi, I'm Phil. This is Phil with Facts, and today is Phoenix Mead Part 2. So it's the second part of our Phoenix Mead video. Today we are going to rack this off, put it into another fermenter, and I got a special little trick to do towards the end of the video. So let's get going. So to start, we're going to take our mead, lose the airlock, uh, put the mead up here. So now this is going to be our auto siphon, which still has a little sanitizer in it. And yes, everything here has been sanitized. The pitcher, the carboy, anything that's going to touch the brew at all has been sanitized. I recommend you do the same. Next, we're going to let gravity just play. This vessel needs to be higher than this vessel for this to work. I'm just going to give it a couple of quick pumps. And there it goes. All right, so, okay, so here we have it. This is our Phoenix Mead, rack into a sanitized pitcher. Uh, next thing you wanna do is take a silicone or plastic spoon and just degas it a little bit. I wanna get some of the gases out. I also don't wanna degas it completely because it is going into secondary fermentation after this. And I do want something left in there I will say this is a very high gravity mead uh, because it had the uh, boche honey in it. That was the cooked caramelized honey we put in last time that will not have fermented out. So we're probably going to have a pretty high gravity to this, but we're probably still going to have some alcohol to it as well. So this is our hydrometer. With it, we're going to know how much alcohol is in this currently. That doesn't mean it's going to stop at that number or that it's 100% accurate at this point because there's still a lot of gases and stuff in here that are going to throw the number off slightly. Also, this is our Boche, so it has a bunch of burnt caramelized honey in here which will not have fermented out. And that's okay. All right. Now there's several scales on this, but essentially what you want to find is the specific gravity. And once you know that, you take that number and this number and you put it into any kind of calculator. There's a ton of apps that will actually break it down for you and tell you the exact alcohol percentage of your brew. There's also a lot of different charts and tables. You can look it up online. I just use a regular app on my phone and it gives me the exact number, which I'm going to put right here. And then next, we're just going to take this, carefully pour it right back in. Now there's a lot of debate over if that's okay or not at this point, because you can activate a seed of actors which essentially eat alcohol and create vinegar. However, this is a mead. It's a lot harder to do that with meads. The honey gives you a little extra cushion. Also, this is still degassing. So, I mean, I'm not so concerned with it. If you are concerned, go to your comfort level. Next, we're just gonna repeat the same process
We're gonna take our auto siphon. Few pumps. All right, so now the very next thing I'm gonna do is take a lid and an airlock because there's still a few more things we need to do, but I don't wanna keep this exposed to air for that long. As I said, I'm not super concerned about it, but why take extra risks? So I need this. All right, so I'm gonna clean this up and then I'm gonna show you the next step. In case you didn't watch the last video, or you did, but maybe forgot, we have our whiskey soaked wood chips that we are gonna burn and add to this. Now this may look like a lot of things going on. It might sound like it, it could get complicated. It's not gonna get complicated. This is actually really simple to do. And there's several ways you could do this. You could bake the wood chips until they start to charcoal. You can get a frying pan, put them in inside, toss them around until they start. Today, I'm just gonna use a lighter. So I have a torch lighter and it works. Uh, first thing you wanna do, separate the chips from the whiskey. Try to get all of them. Next, this is just a pot that I put some aluminum foil in and because it's gonna get hot I don't necessarily want to cook the table or the tablecloth. And now, light it up. All right, once you, get your, once you get your wood charred to the level that you want it, which you don't want it to be burnt, burnt charcoal. You still want there to be some wood. You want there to be some charcoalness to it. You want some burnt characteristics. Really, once you dry, the, once the chips are dry, once there's no more visible whiskey soaking on them, they're pretty much good to go. You're gonna get the flavors you want. And you simply just going to take them. And add them right in. Now do you get why it's called Phoenix? Because on top of everything else, it's going to have this nice char, almost bourbony type note to it. On top of the fact that it's a boche, it's going to be incredible. Next thing we're going to do, take our label. And put it right on the fermenter. It says Phoenix Boche 1.120, and then today's reading, which was a 1.010. Remember, when you take a gravity reading, it's always going to be four digits. And the today's date, which was 21020. And that, guys, is how you put a Boche into its secondary fermentation and add a little something extra to it. I'm going to meet you guys back here for the final facts. All right, and we're back at the final facts. So we made a few different meats now, we made a few different wines, and I've showed you guys how to rack. So pretty much going forward with, the kind, with these kind of videos, if it's a racking video, I'm probably not gonna post it, or maybe I'll record them and post them later on. They're just not the most exciting videos. I'd much rather give you guys videos of the initial recipe, and then you know you have to rack it and whatnot. We'll even make a video on bottling it. Uh, probably sometime soon. Uh, so today was our Phoenix Boche mead. And um, all that means is it was a base mead. This one was actually mango and raspberry. And then we put some cooked honey into it, which is going to keep it sweet even after it's done fermenting. Uh, and then we charred some wood chips. 
threw them on top. So this is gonna have a very fruity, mangoey, almost tropical type of flavor to it. And then some really nice bourbony notes that are gonna come through from the caramel and the honey, from the wood chips. Uh, overall, it's gonna be a really nice process. But here's the question, how long are we gonna keep it in secondary? I'm probably gonna keep it in secondary for at least three weeks, probably a month, uh, taste it, and then decide if I wanna leave it a little bit longer or if I wanna bottle it. And that's gonna give us our idea of how long we're gonna age it for. This one's probably gonna be very drinkable uh, right off the bat, but I might age it three or four months before I even drink it because as you age things, other flavors start to come out, other flavors start to settle. It's a good time, I promise. Um, that's it, it's good. Uh, then, but that's really all I have on this video. Uh, as I said, racking isn't the most exciting process in the world, but if you like this video and you want to see more like it, please let me know. If you want to see more recipes, go ahead and leave me a comment. Ask for specific things. I'd be happy to make them. I'm Phil. This is Phil the Facts. Until next time, guys. Cheers.